Hello, it's another edition of Plus Reports, a compilation of the stories and events that made the news recently. I'm Jacinta Ubiuko. In the wake of World Communications and Information Day marked on every May 17, Nigerians have been urged to harness the opportunities and impacts which digital communication brings. Destiny Momo has more on this. World Telecommunication and Information Society Day has been celebrated annually every 17 May since 1969 to mark the founding of the International Telecommunication Union ITU and the signing of the first International Telegraph Convention in 1865. The COVID-19 crisis has not only highlighted the critical role of information and communication technologies for continued functioning of societies, but has also brought to the fore the startling digital inequalities between and within countries. In commemoration of the day, a telecommunications expert, Michael Dazzy, says Nigerians have embraced digital communication as the new normal, complying with social media and other digital services. Information technology is a great invention that has come to enhance uh, humanity in every respect and in every way of life. And Nigeria, to some extent, has embraced it. We can see that with the introduction of GSM in 2001. Um, many other innovations that have come uh, into the country that is powered by ICT. So it's really a big um, achievement for Africa and Nigeria that we have embraced information technology. At the same time, the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the urgency of accelerating digital transformation and advancing the goals and targets of the Connect 2030 agenda to leave no one behind. Just how has communication and information helped in building a society to achieve national development? Do we have enough infrastructure that will yeah. enable information get to everyone? I said to you, internet penetration is less than 50%. So if we're going to use the web to disseminate information, how many people will get access to that? How many people have access to TV? How many people have access to radio uh, system that they can listen to? World Telecommunication and Information Day is an opportunity to continue to push for digital transformation by promoting national strategies on ICT development, smart policies, to encourage investment, cooperation, and partnership. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. Well, of a truth, the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the urgency of accelerating digital transformation. And according to UN report, advancing the goals and targets of the CONET 2030 agenda to leave no one behind. And this next report is about excessive working hours. The recent report released by World Health Organization and International Labour Organization, which puts 745,000 death rate in 2016 as a result of stroke and heart disease, has elicited reaction from human resources practitioners. The WHO and ILO say these casualties are reportedly to have worked an average of 55 hours weekly as against the 40 hours recommended by ILO. Gozika Ohai Jesse has more on this report. World Health Organization, in a statement from its headquarters in Geneva on Monday, said that the figure was the first global analysis of loss of lives and health associated with working long hours. According to reports, working long hours is killing hundreds of thousands of people a year and could be getting worse due to the economic slowdown. The World Health Organization won by calling for employers and governments to cap working hours in order to safeguard employees' health. Some HR experts share their thoughts on how it causes serious health hazards to workers. As much as um, employ employers 
they want to achieve um, maximum productivity and they also they, they don't want to also lose um, quite a number of their work aside. So with this now, and this is actually telling on the health and it's telling on the, the, the employees themselves because having to work a, a having to work 80 hours for a week, having to because labor law mandated that averagely in Nigeria, Nigeria labor law stays 80 hours. I mean 40 hours, pardon me, 40 hours per week. So because of employee wanting to achieve a whole lot, they tend to use their employers more than the numbers of working hour. And this is really, really causing a lot of hazard in the health of um, employees. My own recommendation for handling this issue of you know, long hour work for employees is we should embrace gladly, we should embrace the issue of work flexibility, working remotely, working from anywhere the employees choose, in as much as we provide some IT based tools and make you to check, make and know, see what they are doing on a daily basis. Some workers in Lagos also express how this has affected their mental health. Definitely, it affected me today, my mental health, because I actually was dozing. I wasn't thinking properly, you know, I was about having a headache because I don't think I had enough sleep. So it really affected me. Stressful, I must confess. It affected the mental health because imbalance, sometimes when you look at it, some of us will fall sick. In the morning, you will be so tired. Stressful really stressful and I always can't wait to get the weekend so I can rest and regain my sanity and ease off a bit. The World Health Organization says the hours should be capped for workers' safety as long working hours appear to be the most significant occupational disease burden accounting for a third of work-related disease. For Plus TV Africa, Gazika or Haichesi. Well, it is crucial that employees can manage GS schedule for family and personal needs. This will help alleviate stress, provide flexible work hours throughout the year, and avoid many work-life conflicts. To insecurity now, following the spate of violence and criminality across the country, a group known as Southwest Women Arise for Nigeria has called on women as mothers of the nation to arise to the clarion call of setting things right. According to this group, the peace enjoyed by communities and nations supersedes every other thing. These women say they have decided to silence the drum of war being beaten by some unscrupulous elements. The co-convener Bolanle Idowu and other speakers say insecurity is grossly the bane of development, hence women can play a vital role to curb it. The women have come together today to talk about Nigerians unity. We are for Nigerians unity. We are not for division. For 2023, we cannot divide. If your BP is normal in Nigeria, you are not normal. That's just the truth. They rape our girls, our women, our husbands, our sons are not left out. We can shake this nation, we can shake this nation by the words of our mouth on our news. Whether you're a Christian or a Muslim. Some of the speakers blame women identifying docility as a factor. The transformation can be instantaneous. That's impossible. The rot is not instantaneous. It's been over the years that things have been going bad and we've kept quiet. So the, the change also towards a better Nigeria is going to be one day at a time. Others said because of the stake they have, they cannot watch things fall apart where the center cannot hold. This, they say, they will be active in the next election by supporting a competent hand to stem the tide. The honors of the peace of this country lies in the hands of women. And we need to take that mantle to say we've had enough of bloodshed. Now, Yaya Bello is one of the governors who have been very supportive of our cause. Irrespective of what tribe you are. 
Someone made mention of uh, Governor Yaya Bello this afternoon. And when we look at it, it is a very young, a young man that came up on board. He cleaned up the civil service payroll. He had done so much for the youth in Kogi State. According to them, women and children are greatly affected during unrest. They say it is time to groom good leadership skills in their sons, husbands and also among themselves. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. It's a good thing that women are lending their voices to such issues like this as national security is everyone's business. Now to the lingering debate on restructuring, analysts have called for a national dialogue between northern and southern governors. This disparity began when the southern governors recently called for restructuring and a ban on open grazing in their zones. Adebanke Odonoye filed this report. In a bid to provide solutions to the challenges bedeviling the nation, governors of the 17 southern states under the ages of the Southern Governors Forum had on May 11th called on the federal government to restructure the country. In response to the call, Senate President Amel Lawan won against joining the agitation for restructuring of the country. While responding to the Senate President, Delta State Governor Ifai Okowa has opined that the calls for restructuring were not new and that they were simply echoing the voice of the people. The call, though referred to as a step in the right direction, was described as coming late. The call for the for restructuring by the 17 Southern State Governors of Nigeria uh, uh, was a call that uh, uh, you know, it was not only necessary, but extremely vital for the development and progress and peace of our country. Uh, well, it didn't come timely enough. Individual restructuring was, however, championed for as this would help that of the country succeed. From my own perspective, I would rather drag it further. That uh, the restructuring should start from the individual. Because that is what we need more than any other thing. We need to restructure our attitudes as individuals. Because if we are restructuring the state or the national, if we are still going to go there with the same attitude of most Nigerians, there might not be much difference from what we are witnessing now. And um, from there, we can now go to the state level to do restructuring. And then from there, we go to the national level to do the structuring. The need for dialogue and following the resolutions the letter was emphasized. We need to come together and discuss because there are a lot of tensions in the, in the land. You know, there's a lot of volatility all over the country. While speaking on Plus TV Africa's breakfast show, a representative of the Mieti Allah encouraged the southern governors to have a dialogue with their northern counterparts in order to take steps that would be preferred to the ban of open grazing in the southern states. I am calling on the northern governors to open up the discussion with their southern counterparts so that they could come up uh, with a situation, with a resolution that can be generally acceptable to both farmers and herders uh, in their respective uh, states. The southern governors have stated that they took this and other decisions to amplify the voices of their people and keep them safe. Reporting for Plus TV Africa, Adebanke Udunui. Everyone seems to have different opinions, but the hope is that all the issues bedeviling the nation should be tackled head on. You're watching Plus Report. There's more after this break.